Hi, it's Veronica with the Crafty Ladder. We are working on the sandals set inside of the summer collection for the apothecary cabinet. All of these pieces are small so that they can fit inside of the uh, drawer for the apothecary cabinet. They all measure, for the most part, less than three and a half inches. And if we look at the sandals, probably about an inch and a half or inch I did that kind of quick and if we turn it so that they're sticking out from the top of the cabinet of the drawer I'm sorry then we're looking at about uh, almost three inches there so the idea is that all of the pieces will fit inside of the drawers of the of the cabinet we are working on the sandals and the color story that we are using for this collection is uh, the tide and sun from this sign so dark blues into light blues and dark reds orange and yellows and of course the brown as our foundation or, or background and uh, we've been working quite a bit here on the collection we have so far completed the uh, drinksters, here's one of them, the beach umbrella, they are drinksters though, monstera leaves, that's going to be a banner, the individual letters which spell out the word sun, and we have worked on some little sunglasses at this point. So check those sessions out if, you've, uh, if you haven't already. And for the sandals, I really want to go with the polka dot theme. I am a big fan of polka dots, polka dots and stripes and checks, gingham checks and buffalo checks and all that kind of stuff I love. And this little bag is going to be complete our little outfit. So this little tote bag, there are three tote bags in this particular collection, uh, but this one is the one that has the rounds or the polka dots. And so I think we should just paint these up together because I want them to follow um, the same kind of color scheme. So this is the handle of the tote. And this bag is inspired by a fossil handbag or fossil tote that I have. We have an outlet uh, mall, um, maybe about 30 minutes away from where we live and they have a fossil store and one day I walked in there and they had uh, these bags with um, I believe it's been a few years since I've seen that tote I was um, in my younger years big on totes and purses and that kind of thing so I have a, a couple of boxes and even um, a trunk with bags and totes so it's been a while since I've seen this one but if my memory serves me correctly then the background is like a beige color reminds me of sand and then the circles are uh, a shade of blue kind of like an aqua marine or a, uh, maybe a teal so I don't remember exactly, but I just remember walking in the store and seeing the collection and it, it was an outlet, it's an outlet store. I don't actually know if it's still there, but it's a fossil brand and um, I just loved it and had to get it. And I don't think I've ever used the darn tote and it's still, <laughs> it's packed away somewhere. So I haven't seen it in a while. So that was the idea behind this. I just remembered it. It's in, still in my head. And the sandals, I thought we would follow the same kind of story. So we're going to go with blues with the background that is um, a warm tan color mimicking kind of sand. And then we'll go with blues. And for the polka dots, uh, I'm just going to keep it simple and I'll explain that in just a little bit. So we need to base coat these guys. They uh, have no base coat on them so they're going to be thirsty and I'm just going to go ahead and use apple barrel warm buff it's very close to the color of the wood are you like me and when you open a bottle and you see that dried paint you kind of get a sense of satisfaction of pulling that off I don't know what that is it's like uh, I don't know 
there's a, a teacher that I follow on Instagram. She's the, or I believe her name is Kristen. She goes by the handle a teeny tiny teacher, teeny tiny teacher. And <laughs> she talks about uh, pulling the fluff off of her, her dog. She has a dog named Murphy. Um, I don't know what breed of dog uh, Murphy is, but we have a golden retriever and we also have um, um, a healer. And so Blackie is the healer and his hair is very fine and coarse and, you know, it doesn't get, he's not a fluffinator. We call Goldie, or I call Goldie the fluffinator because she's a golden retriever and her hair, she gets all fluffy, especially when the fall starts to come in. Even though we're in South Texas and we don't get much cold, um, her fur starts coming in just like, uh, I don't know, it's some, something genetic, like the birds that come through here flying through to get even further south into Mexico and beyond South America. I don't know how far those birdies go, but anyway, my point here is that she starts to fluff up and um, she starts, starts to shed even more. And so you kind of pull the tufts of hair from uh, her. And so anyways, Kirsten, uh, Kristen and I, uh, well, she mentioned in a story, in an Instagram story, that she just gets some kind of sense of relaxation pulling that uh, hair uh, from her dog Murphy and I said yeah me too doing that for Goldie it's just you pull that off and it's something and right now as I'm talking about that I'm thinking about like monkeys <laughs> that groom <laughs> that groom mama's groom their their um, their little monkey babies and I don't know boy did I go off on a tangent there so <laughs> If you know, you know, I guess. But there's just this, this little sense of satisfaction of pulling off that dry paint from the from the bottle. And so you can see it mimics so nicely the paint of the, or the color of the birch wood. And it, I'm not using that much. I'm going in tapping some off. Uh, so I can still see the score lines. Which is great. I designed this file so that the lines are thin enough that you can get the uh, the score line on there so it does look like a sandal. And please tell me if you know what I'm talking about. Whether it's the paint or the dogs or there's other little things that we do, little habits that we have that give us some sense of relaxation or pleasure or I don't know what it is. It must be in our genetic makeup. Who's our scientist that studied adaptations in the Galapagos Island. Why is his name escaping me? It'll come to me later. The other, the other day we were working on a session here. We were doing a video on um, using a paint sponge and the word escaped me. It just was not coming to me. And I said, what is that word? I was, I was trying to explain. I have a paint sponge here. I was trying to explain this and the word came to me after the video, after I finished recording at some point, that I was talking about density, how dense the sponge is, because you want a sponge that is dense. Of course, it's a sponge, so it's porous. These are, I'm sure, artificially made. There's nothing natural. It doesn't look like there's much natural about it. So they're artificially made. I mean, they're, they are artificial sponges, and they do have the pores, and so the point paint does absorb, and it goes through, and you can start seeing it build up but they are dense enough that you can see there's some bounce back and that's good because even though the paint starts to absorb you still have enough paint um, that's left on the edge of the uh, sponge so that you can get in there and, with a light coat and then of course if you need more you come in and add another coat but the word that was escaping me at the time was dense it's just it's a dense sponge so <laughs> Welcome to my TED Talk. <laughs> I 
Didn't mean to give another TED Talk today, but there you go. So anyways, the name of that scientist is escaping me. I always think of Sir Isaac Newton, but that's not who... Um, that's not who we're talking about. The Adaptation Sky, Galapagos Island, I'm just saying there's something in the genetic code that gets some kind of strange pleasure from plucking dry paint off the top of acrylic paint bottles. <laughs> Alrighty, so we've base coated that, and I think I am going to go ahead and base coat this. Little tote bag. Are you uh, someone who appreciates a good tote bag? so many things that when I was younger I'd spend my money on and I wish I hadn't but you don't have the chance to go back in time and tell your younger self hey don't don't spend so much money on clothes and shoes and purses and costume jewelry that was me straight out of college I went to work for the Social Security Administration and um, well it started kind of as a part-time gig there was an opening I was in a work-study program and so I did work at the college for uh, during the, uh, using that or in that work-study program and that was a cool job for a couple of years and then there was an opening for a program run by the Social Security Administration and so I went ahead and applied for that it paid better so I went for it and that type of job the, the job I had at the university I was able to just dress as my normal self as a college student in jeans and shorts and t-shirts and the like but for the Social Security Administration you had to wear more professional attire and so that's where the story began with spending money on business suits and costume jewelry and high heels and things like that. And I think when you have friends in the office that, you know, give you compliments and appreciate a good outfit and a nice handbag, and, you know, we would all do that for each other in an office where you have people that you, you know, get along with and enjoy their company, and you, so you start paying attention to that kind of stuff. At least that was my experience. I don't know about you. Love to know, though. You know, we all walk different paths, so. But yeah, I wish I hadn't gone down that road. I spent way too many on too much money on that kind of stuff. I even still have a lot of those pieces. All right, we are going to go with a little, um, I think some paint spatter to get that little effect of sand um, kind of in the background. So let me go ahead and get a little bit of uh, parchment. I would say parchment, but it's really wax paper.
got the fan going, so I'm going to turn that off. And so for that, I need a little bit of brown. And I'm going to use the brown oxide from Apple Barrel. Don't need much. I will need a stiff. Usually you use a toothbrush for this, but I'm going to look for a stiff brush. I don't want to use a toothbrush because these pieces are relatively small. Not the tote bag so much, but the, the sandals. And you need some water, so we'll get some water on the palette or plate. Brush is getting wet. I'm going to get some brown in the mix. And the brush should be stiff enough that when I rub my, and it's just short bristle, shorter bristle, not as short as I probably should have found, but I should be able to um, flick it and get some. Bladder. I don't have enough brown on there. It's too diluted. I'm just kind of testing here on the side. Here we go. kind of aiming for this area here. I think in my mind I'm thinking of um, kind of, you know, Berkey's, Birkenstocks. They have that cork sole. It's got some texture. Not enough water. I'm not really getting it where I want to get it. I'm getting some on the sole. But I really wanted to get it in the um, the footbed here. It's really light. It's coming across really light. You know, I have that little spatter right there. I'm getting some on the bag, so that's good. I'm gonna get a little bit more paint. I said a little, and of course, a lot came out. I'm happy with this sandal. This footbed, this bladder, the dots are a little too small. At least the spatter on the footbed is a little too small for my liking.
There we go. All right. This is going to be, the sole is going to be painted blue, a dark blue. But the footbed is what I want to have that natural color. There we go. And you see why I needed the wax paper? Because we made a little bit of a mess. I say we, but of course that was all me. <laughs> Shouldn't be blaming you. A lot of times I blame Goldie for things. Since she rarely speaks up for herself get away with that and just you get doing some cleanup and I want to get rid of that that little spatter right there or just tone it down a little bit because it's a little bit bright for my liking or a little bit too big for my liking so I'm just coming in with the with the buff again toning that down and the same with this over here on the bag I wanted some spatter but I didn't want the huge spots all right so an effect we're going for here all right, we're going to go ahead and come in, and I'm going to go with the dark blue, and then we're going to work with the band of the sandal will be, um, I think I'm going to use a Caribbean blue. So, what I need to do is guide my line or my coloring in or my painting in with um, you could use a watercolor pencil or I'm just gonna go ahead and use I like to use a Crayola marker and the reason is Crayola markers are water-based you don't need to worry about um, uh, them blending in with your acrylic paint because they're water-based acrylic paint is water-based so you um, can easily get a blend and they're going to help me outline the area where I want to contain where I want to contain my paint. I could use a watercolor pencil. The thing with watercolor pencils, you have to sharpen them, and you also sometimes get a blunt edge rather than a sharp point at the edge. You could also use a paint marker. So, um, what you can definitely do that with a Crayola marker since it's water based it will um, when you add paint or wetness to it it's going to blend for you so it'll look like you've done some shading whereas a paint marker is pretty much straight up paint and the reason that I want to outline this is because I'm going to come in with the blue and paint that in and I do not want to get the blue paint here on the perimeter. I want that uh, I want to maintain the shape of the sandal and of course as soon as I said that I went overboard with my line that's okay we'll just make the the edge a little bit wider than it was intended to be. Okie dokie. And I'm going to go ahead and... Hmm. I'm debating. I guess, yeah, this inside part of the sandal of the of the, um, I can't, the word is gone, it just left, is, is going to be darker. So this part underneath would be darker. 
So it does make sense to go ahead and outline that little area. The overlay will be there, but this part inside is the inside of the shoe or inside of the sandal underneath the, the strap. There you go. Gosh, why is it hard to speak English sometimes? And it's nice to have the guide, so when I come in right now with the paint, it will be pretty easy to stay in there. And again, it's just, it's very similar to when you color and you don't want to go outside the line. It's the same thing here. You don't want to paint outside the line. And now that I think about it, I guess I should go ahead and outline this here. get that same thickness that I did that was a little boo-boo but I want to go ahead and follow suit on this side so that we have a matching pair looks like shadow shadows cast Okay, we are going to come in with a darker blue. Again, we are trying to um, follow what we have here on the sign. And I'm going to use, we're going to try again with this navy. This is Deco Art Americana satin, and it is a navy. And earlier I tried to use it on, I think, think one of the drink stirs yeah I think we were doing that blue hurricane drink uh, drink for the drink stir and it came out looking purple and it's possible that I didn't mix it enough and there was probably some separation it's a new bottle so however long it's been sitting I ordered this from deco art I, uh, I know Walmart carries I think Walmart carries deco art for sure. Jo uh, Hobby Lobby does. Hobby Lobby is the store we have in, in my town. But I ordered these online from deco art. So we're going to try again because I really like the blue. I think it's pretty. It's a little bit different from the Apple Barrel um, Admiral, Admiral Blue. It's just, uh, it seems to have a different hue. I don't know if you can tell. It looks pretty similar, but it's it's got a little more brightness to it. This one tends to lean um, like it has a little bit more black in it. So I'm going to look for a short bristle brush that has some stiff bristles this one may be a little too stiff I like the length of the bristle but it looks a little too stiff 
this one's good. And the reason that I want it to be small is because I want it to be able to get into this area here. So this is, these don't unfortunately, oh, this one does have, it's a number two. I have no idea where this came from. You can see I collect them from all over the place and then I have a hard time getting rid of them. And the reason is that I use them for all different things. So, I, you know, of course they're paintbrushes, but once they've been used for paint, if I didn't wash it in time or I used it for something I wasn't supposed to, some kind of medium like Mod Podge or Glaze or something, Gesso or something, then the bristles don't um, bounce back. They're not as, as fresh as they were when you first buy them. And they're cheap brushes for the most part. I mean, I do have some nicer quality brushes, but those I save for painting. These other ones, I, I so after they've had their use as paint brushes, um, I go ahead and save them for use with other things. And I have a mix. I really need to kind of go through them and uh, kind of separate them out so that I have them a little more organized. So now it's looking blue. So earlier, what I, my point that I was trying to make was that when I was trying to use it on that blue hurricane drink, it lo was looking blue purple yeah it looks blue it's great that's what I wanted and that line is serving as my guide There's nothing particularly unique about this. This is just I'm painting these up blue. Thinking of the bottom of that ocean wave. And you see how it doesn't matter that we got some of that splatter on there because the blue is covering that up right up. And that Crayola marker outline is blending right in. and water base so they just are kind of, kind of seamless. And I'm going to come in and take care of this little interior part of the flap. really is a pretty blue. I love the Americana paints, the deco art line of paints. The color saturation is just is great. And the satin paints I have found to be really silky. It's a nice finish. So definitely look at those. They don't have, last time I looked, which it's been a few months, they don't have a, a lot of colors in that line, but the colors they do have, it's well worth grabbing them. 
I know there was a hubbub about them discontinuing a bunch of colors from their line because they say they can't um, afford to make all of the colors they have in their lineup. But a lot of people, I think, gave them feedback that they were unhappy about some of the colors that are going away. So they gave an update that they would relook, reevaluate. Remind me of that hubbub. I don't know if you use a Cricut, Cricut machine, cutting machine, but Cricut had a hubbub as well. I think it was last year, maybe two years ago, where they were going to start charging for the use of their design software. The way that that works, if you're not familiar, is that it's a die cut machine and it comes with a software program that you can go in and cut different shapes. And they have a subscription service so that if there's a particular design that you'd like, they have a bunch of different, I don't know, thousands and thousands of clip art and fonts and things that you can cut, but it's part of the subscription service. And you have to pay a month I think it's probably less than ten dollars. I've had it in the past. I don't, I'm not active with it right now, but um, if you buy a machine, you want to have software to be able to use, right? Well, they were going to start charging, I believe, for that basic service. So if you bought a machine, you'd have to join and pay the monthly fee. So people were upset about that, and to me, that makes sense. I wouldn't want to spend. The machines are not cheap. If you're not familiar, the machines are a good. $300 I think at least. I have a Cricut Maker which is not the most recent version because they update those things but um, the one I have I think cost close to $400 to Cricut Maker because it, it cuts all sorts of materials, fabric, paper of course, vinyl, fabric, um, thin wood, leather, suede, things like that. So when I bought it, it's several years old, probably six, seven years old. When I bought it, it had first come out, and so I think I spent about $400 on it. I don't know how much the newer machines are now. So my point is, you spend that much money, you want to be able to have software, you want to be able to use it. So they used to have it, or it, it, the policy was always, it, there was software was included, and so you'd be able to cut at least some basic things. And then if you wanted to um, kind of up-level your graphics, then you'd buy the subscription. So they decided that they were going to just charge everybody a fee for the basic software, and I think there was an uproar about that. And we're talking thousands of people, I guess, that um, were upset about it, and to me that makes sense. We are moving on to, pause on that story, we are moving on to the strap. And we are going to use this um, Apple Barrel Caribbean. And so back to my Cricut story. So they reevaluated and let everybody know that the free access would continue. made sense, at least to me anyway. But I know I was in there the other day cutting, what was I cutting? I think I was designing my head does not want to go where it needs to. I guess I'm more tired than I thought. Oh, looks cute. I think I need to add some white. So we'll do that in just a sec. Oh, I forgot I need to color the straps. I was going to go with blue on that. 
with the navy. Oh yes, I know, remember. I was doing some Christmas ornaments, an angel, and so the Cricut machine allows you to upload an SVG file. And you can cut, of course, the SVG file that we use that I've designed here, it's cutting out, you use it to cut out on wood. But you can, on many files, I'm sure, use the SVG, go into the Cricut machine and cut paper. And that's what I was doing. I was doing a Christmas ornament with an angel and the little angel has a dress. So um, instead of painting, I was gonna do some a Mod Podge, some decoupage. So I wanted to cut out uh, the little dress out of Christmas paper, Christmas scrapbook paper. So I am going to, before I dive into the white, I'm gonna go ahead and come back and take the care of these handles. And that is with the navy. So I went into the Cricut software, and as I mentioned, I don't have the um, membership right now. I think it's, I don't know, it's about 10 bucks a month. And well, if you don't use something that often, then why are you gonna spend $10 a month? That's $120 for the year, right? So, and I don't use it that often. And if you need it, you can go in and make the purchase because graphics with them, they charge a good, I think it's 99, 99 cents. I don't know. I have not checked in a while. So I think many of the graphics are 99 cents. There are free graphics and free fonts that you can use. Um, but if you want something that's a little better quality or a little bit um, more complex, then you need to pay. And so it makes sense to go ahead and do the, the monthly membership instead of paying per item. So I went in there and I uploaded the SVG with the little dress pattern and got the measurements going and everything. And I needed to kind of, the little dress had a hem and I wanted to cut the little hem out. I wanted to cut the hem away from the dress, from the body of the dress. So I used an arch shape. I don't, I think I want to make sure that I have the right angle here of the right side of the, the tote bag, this little tiny piece. And so I used an arch to cut the hem out and thinking no problem. I wasn't paying attention. I was just kind of working through it, getting it done. And when I went to cut, there was a charge of 99 cents. And I was like, what is this 99 cent charge for? I didn't buy a graphic or anything. Well, it was that shape. They were charging me 99 cents for an arch. The, I was using the arch, kind of this shape, to cut the hem off of the bottom of the dress. Okay, so they don't charge you if you use a circle or a square or a rectangle, I guess. But if you want to use something like an arch, then they do charge you. <laughs> and, oh my gosh. So I went back, I deleted what I had done, and I went back. So I'm not going to pay 99 cents just because I used an arch. I went back, I deleted that, what I'd done. It wasn't anything complicated. So I came back and I used a, a circle and, I don't know, to accomplish the same freaking thing so that I wouldn't have a charge. I mean, come on. Are they that hard up that they need to charge for an arch? So I don't, I don't know. I forgot what I'm looking for. I know I'm going to come in with some white and get this on the strap. I may even do a little bit of highlighting on the... I'll probably want to use my scrubber for that, my little scrub brush that I like to use, which I have here. This is a Joe Sonia uh, dry brush, oval dry brush. It The size is two, and the number of it is 2010. 
uh, Joe Sonia, that's J-O space S-O-N-J-A apostrophe S. She's got a very nice quality line of brushes. These are not your little cheapy brushes. You're going to pay six, seven, eight bucks and more for some of her brushes, but the quality is fantastic. You want to take care of them, clean them, and that kind of thing. Um, use a brush cleaner, or I just use Dawn and water, and um, my brushes do my when I take care of them they they do last so uh, I know I want to use white as a highlight but that's not what I was looking for that's not what I was thinking of. oh I need to do the little circles here so what I like to do on the this block is take my tape runner and this block is using losing a little bit of stickiness at least on the left side so I'm going to come in with this is just a tape runner it has double stick tape inside and I'm going to come in and get some adhesive on there so that I can paint up these little circles. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and do some darker blue building up into the lighter, into that, what, what was the color, Caribbean, and then do some white. So we'll do maybe two blue, these two bottom ones, then these three will have blue kind of blending into the Caribbean, and then these two will be Caribbean, and then these three will be Caribbean blending into the white. You know, and I'm just having fun with this. Um, you, if you're doing this for yourself and you're having fun with it, and this you like this technique, then go for it. But if you um, are doing this for a uh, first because you're going to make a happy buck, like Bob Ross used to say, then that's wonderful. But you're going to be doing this. Your time is uh, your time is money and you don't want to spend this much time doing these things and I get that so come in use paint marker uh, that'll be quick it'll be painless and you don't need to worry about doing shading you can just come in and paint all of the circles one color you can come in and do blending like we're doing here um, very easily so we're gonna come in we are going to do that little circle is coming loose we're gonna come in with the Caribbean. Do a little bit of blending there. Oh, we've got, thank goodness, we've got some waiting in the wings. Start blending here on the plate or whatever your palette is. I've got a little bit too much blue uh, Caribbean. I'm going to come back into the navy and blend that up because I want it to be a blend. I do not want it to be straight Caribbean. Not yet. It's looking good. I hope you can tell there's a little bit of blending happening. Now I do want to get some of that navy off of my brush. So I'm just kind of cleaning that up a little bit. Now I'm going to come in and get some of that straight Caribbean. Now we want straight Caribbean and then it's going to blend into the white. And you see how nice it is to have the block for these small pieces. So you can make, totally you can make a quick work of this if you are painting these up because you're going to sell them. And of course the apothecary cabinet um, collections have a lot of pieces uh, because I wanted you to have items in the collection that remind you of that particular theme. So you've got tote bags and sandals and individual letters that spell sun and monstera leaves for banners and sunglasses and drink stirrers and lip balm and sun lotion and hats and hats and 
you know you've got all of these beautiful pieces in there but if you're selling them you don't have to sell all of them you know you can just come in and give your customers an option um, if you are doing a craft show just take a few of the options um, and see what your customers appreciate and enjoy and uh, kind of catch their eye and you don't again you don't have to do all of them of course if you're going to sell it as a kit that would be amazing so you're giving your customers a lot of options but this set I'm keeping <laughs> I've decided I'm going to go ahead and keep all of the original paints that I do with these sets so this is, uh, I forgot to say, but it is folk art, titanium white. So now we are coming in with the titanium white. That little guy is coming loose. And we're also going to do the same thing, kind of work that in the blue, the um, aquamarine, right? No, Caribbean, has started to dry up. So I'm going to get some paint on there, and then I'm going to come back with the blue and do some blending. There we go. I said I was going to use my dry brush, but... Oh well. And the reason I was thinking of the dry brush is because I wanted to scrub in that white. But this is working nicely. I want to come in with that. I've still got that Caribbean on the brush. So I want to work it in a little bit better. come back with the white just a little teeny bit the thing is that that titanium white is really powerful so a little bit is really dramatic and I'm debating whether the handles look a little too a little too safe so we're coming in with some of that white some of that blue kind of doing a little blending some of that paint off. Go back with some white. You see, when you're doing this for yourself, you can take the time do these special little touches. And I'm just going in and getting some more of that blue. And it's working its way into the white. And it adds a little bit of interest as opposed to just being that navy color. For being a small brush it really is getting a lot of paint. Okay. 
coming back in, picking up some of the blue just so that I can get the streaks so the blend is a little bit nicer. Okay. There we go. The only thing that I'm kind of looking at is the uh, blue on the bottom of the shoe. And I think that we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of, I will come in and use the dry brush and I want to go in with the white. And I want to scrub a lot of that off. I've got a wipe here that's kind of drying up. So we're going to use that to work the white into the bristles of the brush. And what I want to do is just kind of add some little highlight details. I'm turning the brush sideways and the good thing about this type of short bristle brush the bristles are really compact and they again it acts like a little scrubber so I'm getting white paint in there And it's lightening up the blue, which is exactly what I want. But I'm not getting dark streaks. I think you can see that. It's coming across nicely. So you get the effects of shadows and lightness, a worn sandal. And the reason I'm using the wipe again is I'm getting most of the, I'm trying to work the white paint into the bristles of the brush. So I'm trying to get most of the paint off. And I'm coming in and I'm not pushing too hard. Coming in and scrubbing that in. I think this is a hog's hair brush. So the the bristles are, I think it is, I'm not positive, but um, the bristles are coarse. They're nice and compact. and I think the effect is coming off quite nicely. I'm going to do a little scrub in here as well just kind of to lighten up that little area where the light would hit it if it's not on the foot of course. <laughs> just to give it a little bit of contrast. Not that you would have natural light hitting that but There we go. It's even kind of giving me a denim effect, which I like. All right. Right now I'm looking at this side panel of the tote and I'm thinking maybe blue, but I don't know. I may be happy with just, let's go ahead and glue it up, glue up the pieces and see what I think once we do that. I'm just gonna try and get some of the excess paint off and then we'll go ahead and get it in the water let that water work the bristles. You don't want to leave it in there for for too long. And take care of those quality brushes. So we are using Type On Quick and Thick. And just want to make sure I've got the right flap for this sandal. I think I do. Use your finger to get some glue on there. And 
use the score line as your guide. Oh, looks cute. Cute, cute. I was thinking about adding polka dots. I think I told you that at the beginning. But I don't know. I think I like it just as it is. I was thinking of adding some polka dots here and here, but then I went in the direction of the splatter. I got some glue here on the side. And I kind of decided to go with that ocean wave. Oh, I think they look cute. Dun, dun, dun. Alrighty. Now let's work on these little guys. These little dots. So I was going to try and get some polka dots on there to kind of mimic the dots on the bag. That's where my brain was going with that. But it's not where we headed after I started painting. Just make sure because we're we painted them this way that you stick it in the same direction as you painted. I think the actual bag the color of the bag is a little bit lighter than this buff color that we used I'm talking about my purses I'm kind of now tempted to go in do a search and look at my bags day job I work as an educational consultant and I don't use a handbag as much anymore and the reason is so I was a teacher for a good many years over 20 years a classroom teacher so And I didn't have a desk for the first few years. I worked at a table. And we did have a cabinet that locked, but sometimes I'd leave that cabinet open. So I start using a pur stopped using a purse because you just your items are not secure. You have to worry about somebody coming in and stealing. I mean, there's no nice way to really say that. So I stopped using a purse. I would use a, a wallet so that if I had to go to Walmart or HEB after work or even before work, just take my wallet or a wristlet with me. And so the era of handbags and costume jewelry and that kind of stuff went by the wayside.
use the score line as your guide and you want to make sure that the handle the pieces of the handle line up I think that looks cute, cute, cute. But I think I am, maybe, I'm gonna think on it a bit. I think I am maybe gonna come in and do some blue shading in here, or blue going into the, um, the aquamarine, but using the same kind of technique that we've been using here on this side panel. But I won't keep you here to do that. Um, I'll just go ahead and do it off camera. And um, once we style this up, I'll share that with you. But I think it looks great. I really like, again, we are using the color story from the beach sign, the wave and ocean, waves and sun sign. Um, so. We've, we're hitting the blues with that and the natural the natural um, weaves inspired by um, a tote bag that I have that has a natural background and then blues so that is it for our sandals in this particular tote bag there are two more tote bags in the collection uh, we will continue on probably with, I'm not sure, I'll surprise you on the next one. I haven't decided if we'll work with the hats or uh, the totes, so I will think on that. This is a session, it, we covered the sandals and one of the tote bags. It is part of the summer collection designed for the apothecary cabinet. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'm Veronica, and you can send me an email to thecraftyladder at gmail.com. You can also reach me over on Facebook. Send me a direct message, or please, if you design a, or paint any of these, please go ahead and share them with me. Do a post over on our Facebook page, and uh, or send me a message. And it, I'm, I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to see what you your touches are when you paint these up. All right, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.